Chris, what is our third main topic today? It's from Raza Hyder. Hey, John and crew. Yesterday, a Reddit user noticed some interesting edits that were made to episode three of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. One scene where Bucky throws a metal bar at a woman and it goes through her shoulder now shows the bar bouncing off of her. The other change, when Zemo shoots the scientist, the scene originally showed him with his eyes open and blood all around him. Now there's no blood and his eyes are closed. Why do you think these edits were made a year after the show premiered and could other series could uh, be edited as well? All right, this is kind of interesting. Thanks a lot for writing that in, Raza. So, yeah, look, we have heard in the dawning of the streaming age, there have been a couple of times when stories have come out about small edits that have been made to movies for insert reasons. Splash. One of the big ones was Splash, right? Where there's a scene in Splash where a we understand to be naked Daryl Hannah, uh, run turns around and runs into the water, and we get a little bit of butt crack in the shot. However, in the streaming version of it, I can't remember, was it Disney Plus? The yeah. Disney Plus decided in that moment, in that shot, to digitally make her hair longer to cover the butt crack. And it looks god-awful. It did nothing to the movie. It did nothing to change anything about the movie. You just didn't get to see Daryl Hannah's ass. It you made can... no difference to the film whatsoever. Sorry. However, it did introduce the notion that streamers or, well, let's face it, George Lucas introduced the idea that you can go in and change movies anytime you want back when he did Star Wars the Special Editions. But in the streaming world, it kind of set off the flare in the air that the streamers can make minor changes if they want to. It was hilarious to me to see how many people made a bigger deal out of that particular issue with Daryl Hannah. But that being said, we have seen this happen a couple of times. And now we have a situation where they've gone back. I mean, Falcon and Winter Soldier is their show. I mean, they made it. It is whatever they want it to be. But they have gone in, apparently, and made a couple of very minor changes, but changes nonetheless. One of the things he mentioned in there was the shot that in the there's at the top the original shot that we saw in Falcon and Winter Soldier. And now if you go in and watch Falcon and Winter Soldier today in that same episode, you see this. I sleeping. Again, yeah, nappy time. Again, nothing about the show, the story, the flow, the narrative, nothing has been impacted or affected. It's just that we don't see blood coming out of his mouth. The question is, why make that change? The only thing I can personally come up with is with them bringing over the Netflix Marvel stuff, the R-rated stuff, the Daredevil, the Jessica Jones and whatnot, that maybe they want to make sure there's a more distinct difference between what we have on the main Disney Plus and what's behind the parental controls on Disney Plus. I mean, I have no other explanation for that, to be honest with you. For me personally... As long as the changes that get made are these, quite frankly, inconsequential changes, I'm okay with it. It's the material changes that start to worry me. Let's go back again to the Star Wars Special Edition. The changing of the awesome Ewok song, at the, the Yub Nub song, that's a material change. The change of Han encountering Jabba the Hutt a, the dock of that—that was a material change to the. That was an entirely new scene. I mean, it was one that George originally shot, but still, it was an entirely new scene. That's where I still start to get a little bit concerned. At any rate, uh, this comes to us from the folks over at CBR. Write the following: Reddit user uh, Moon in Mulan writes. Uh, first reported the two changes to, that Disney Plus made to the show, which both appear in the third episode, Power Broker. The first edit is visible in a shot of Hydra scientist Wilfred Nagel, which we just watched, his dead body, which is no longer splattered with blood. Nagel's eyes are also closed, and the blood has been removed from his mouth. The second edit comes later in episode three when Sam Wilson, Bucky Barnes, and Sharon Carter go up against a band of bounty hunters. Bucky originally pinned one of the combatants to a shipping container by hurling a pipe through her shoulder, but now the pipe glances off her chest. This, unfortunately, causes a continuity error because as Bucky's opponent is later shown, pinned against the container. But, you know, whatever, what have you. So, uh, I'll be honest with you. These are such inconsequential and minor changes. I don't know why they did it. 
I don't know what the point is. And quite frankly, if I had gone back and watched Falcon and the Winter Soldier again, which I have no plans on doing because I didn't think it was that great, but I probably wouldn't even notice that there's a difference. Chris, you see them making these changes, Mm -hmm. these differences. Number one, why do you think they bothered doing it? And then number two, does it make you worry about a potential slippery slope situation where they make radical changes to it in the future? I don't know. How do you feel about that? Sure does make me worried. It changes who shot who first, right? Yeah, like, well, yeah. That, again, another Star Wars example. Yeah. There's some issues that could happen. This is such a big for why for me. Um, and someone in the chat suggested, what if this is just for the parental control version? That's, mm. that's my kind yeah, of thought, right? right? And, and <clears throat> that, I think, would make more sense, right? Of if your kid wants to watch it, sure, maybe we don't show the more bloody version of this. But if this is on the regular version of stuff, I don't understand the point of having something released and then going back and editing it and making it different from the, you know, the Netflix uh, Marvel shows. I feel like those already have a very different tone and vibe than these shows. Blood in or blood out. Like either way, you know what those Netflix shows are when you see them. Mm -hmm. They're, They're much darker and grittier. So I don't understand why they did this. And look, certain edits like the splash one, you can see a butt whenever you want. Go in your bathroom, take your trousers off, <laughs> peek at yourself. Ooh, all right, not a big deal. But stuff that does affect the continuity of a film, the narrative of a film, like you were saying, or a show, that is where I take issue with this because you're you're messing with the original filmmaker's intent and their story. And, and like we talked about earlier, we're all in service of the story. What is this in service to? Couple angry moms? Mm, that's not good enough for me. Uh, by the way, uh, breaking news on the wrap: uh, George Lucas is releasing a special edition of the Oscars where Chris Rock slapped first. <laughs> uh, just throw, by the way, th- thank you to one of the people in our live chat who actually put that in. I thought that was hilarious when I saw that. Anyway, um, you know, Aaron, you see a change like this being made. I mean, this is innocuous. There's nothing here. It doesn't really change anything. Mm -hmm. But is it important that we take note of it? Why do you think they did it? Could it lead to other editorial liberties maybe they take later? I don't know. How do you see it? Well, let's also remember this is not the first time that these kinds of edits are made. I mean, just as an example, um, for those of you out there who don't know, I played a character named Sura on a television show called Spartacus Blood and Sand that was on Stars. And when it was on Stars, we also were called Spartacus Boobs and Blood um, because there was a lot of nudity. A lot of nudity. Um, and in they, uh, there was a scene in which um, my character is being carted off by a Roman army, ripped away from her husband. And I'm reaching back and um, my the 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 uh, body parts formerly known as my breasts. They are no longer because I had breast cancers. No, I have new pretty ones. Um, They are on full display as my character was being torn away. But when the show was then re-aired on other networks that did not have those same uh, boobs and blood liberty, they digitally imposed a little piece of material over my breast. And so this is commonplace for when a show has been, you know, or when you see something on an airplane, for example. Um, we've all seen the, the the audio dubbing of, you mother farter, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, I think that what we're going to see, because there is a balance here, you know, we have these shows that we really love for being part of the genre world that we are so enamored by, but also being a little bit more gritty and a little bit harder and a lot more blood. Um, and then we also have the the wider audience that should be served, a younger generation that we want to be able to grow up and have the same kind of passion and love for these ty- for this genre. And I feel like there has to be a little bit of service to both in a way, which I think what we're getting to is, Um, Having a version of this that is going to be with the parental controls on and then having the version that's going to be maybe and maybe it becomes another uh, another pay subscription like all Disney because Disney, let's face it, is for family friendly programming, regardless of what they have uh, adopted, regardless of what they have been doing in the last, you know, 10 years or so, it started and has always been for the purpose of family friendly programming. So Disney Plus may just say, hey, listen, we are family friendly programming and we are going to make certain edits so that families can watch our programming without any concerns at all. If you want to watch the more R-rated versions, the ones that have more 
you know, graphic depictions, um, then you're going to have to pay an extra two ninety nine to have access to the, you know, uh, after dark version of Disney. I'm not saying they should because I know everybody's already like, oh my God, I don't want to spend too much money. I'm like, not saying I'm just that- wrapping my head around what would the after dark version of Disney look like? Well, it would basically yeah. have, you know, someone being pinned with, sure. you know, some, they would have more blood splatter. It would have more R-rated language. It Ewoks would, gone wild. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Again, I'm not saying that's what they should do. I just think that we're edging to that because I do think it is a slippery slope when you just start saying, hey, yeah, I know that you really enjoyed watching it for this and you are an adult and you can handle, you know, someone being <laughs> impaled against a wall, but we want to make sure that a five-year-old can watch this and not be scarred for life so we're going to dumb down what you get to watch too i think that is a slippery slope and you know what i am an adult and i want to be able to watch all the grit and the blood and all the graphic stuff um but i understand that as a company they're family friendly first and so there is a service that they have to do i i think that we're getting into a world where they're going to have to separate here's here's the funny thing though this is the, the the timing of this I find strange because yeah. we just talked on the show yesterday that Moon Knight or, or the other day Moon Knight has gotten a rating in most countries that's equivalent to TVMA yeah. here. So while Disney is putting that on Disney Plus and we're going to talk about Moon Knight here in a second, they're taking out a couple of blood splatter scenes. I mean, that's that's I mean, again, I don't know. Maybe this is like the director of the episode thought, you know, I, I don't like the blood splatter there. And the Disney just said, okay, you're the director. We'll let you go in and change it. I mean, I, I mean, I just don't know. But again, it just seems weird to me that that choice would be made for that while they're airing something that is TV and MA mm. for a lot of people. I don't know. Rob, you had a chance to take a look at this. What do you think about the situation? What do you think is motivating it? Well, I think, I think we've touched on what's motivating it. I think that those depictions of violence were probably, even though they're so minor, what what uh, th that that was probably why it was taken out because seeing someone impaled is probably against well we can show someone get punched or shot but seeing someone impaled means it's R rated so but they I already aired it I, I know you know that's, that's why it's, it's all here's a, here's what I don't understand and what scares me the most as all of our art and all of our literature and all of our movies are being put online digitally. That means they can be altered in very subtle ways that we might not even know about. Uh, you know, Mark Twain used these words back when he originally wrote Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry mm -hmm. Finn. And you know what? They're a little triggering now. And let's change his let's. It's not a big deal. Let's change the way he wrote. Uh, you know, it was in the 1800s. It's a different time. That to me, we're there, man. And we're there. And there are people that are like, yeah, you're right. We should change his work. And because we are infantilized and we are, and you know, in the case of Splash, John, the one thing that bothered me about that was not necessarily that a body part was covered, but that the Daryl has character is a mermaid. And so you, they make a lot of a point of when she's a fish, like when she's in the bathtub and you see, she doesn't have body parts when she's a human. And, and when she runs away, there's a moment into the water and Tom Hanks is watching her, you know, he's seeing her as a woman, as opposed to a fish. And, and, and there was, there was a moment there that was, there was the reason why they chose to do that. And I think that when people after the fact are willy nilly making these kinds of decisions, ultimately the decisions are not really, they're knee jerk decisions and they're not really thought about. And the long-term ramifications of this will just have our society gets chipped away, chipped away, chipped away, history, None of that matters anymore. We don't have to worry. We just need to make society the way we want it now. And it's, I think ultimately it's a dangerous mindset. Now that said, a corporation can do whatever they want because they own the product. And if they're a family company first, they can make those changes. Are those changes right to make? That is a philosophical question that I think that they shouldn't make those changes. But are we going to as a society is that going to be normalized? I think Disney has the right to do whatever the heck they want. Does that mean it's right? I don't think so. Well, you know what, Rob? What you're saying brings up an interesting point that we were talking about actually before the show, which is 
when we today in 2022 go back and watch certain things that were totally considered normal and and fine and um you know even 20 years ago it is shocking what was accepted then and what is not accepted now and part of it is re-watching something and going oh my gosh wow like look at how much of a different world we're in and there and there are certain things i won't say what i was referring to before but something that tom and i were watching we were i mean i was watching and i was like oh god oh my god oh why oh god i can't believe he's saying that i can't believe he's saying that but when i watched it for the first time you know i think that part of it is i i think of the world in a little bit of a different way but yeah Anyway, guys, the question is for you. What do you think about this? I mean, honestly, I don't think I or most people would have ever even noticed that these changes were made, but changes were made. Why do you think they did it, especially since they're putting out TVMA content right now? It's an interesting question. Why do you think it happened, guys? Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comment section below and leave us your thoughts. Hey guys, we want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video, Athletic Greens. Now, I started taking Athletic Greens because I don't eat enough vegetables, and I was looking for a way to make up for that deficit in my diet of those vitamins and minerals that I really need in my system, and thank goodness I found Athletic Greens, and I literally take it every morning. You see, with one scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptive to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, all the things. And my wife got onto it and now she absolutely loves it. You know, tons of people take some kind of multivitamin and it's important to choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb like Athletic Greens. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with a convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash campia. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash campia to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And a special thank to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this episode of the John Campia Show.